For 20 years, you've trusted us to reinvent the standard in sports nutrition products. We don't plan on stopping, just like you. C.T. Fletcher, a powerlifting legend and one of the most motivational lifters in the industry. I met C.T. a few years ago as we were working on his documentary, My Magnificent Obsession. Since then, we have yet to work together again on camera. I was looking forward to reconnecting with him and had a lot to ask. A few months prior to our meeting, C.T. suffered a heart attack. He's now on a waiting list for a heart transplant. As I arrived to Iron Addicts Gym in Single Hill, California, everything seemed familiar. It felt just like days ago we were here, shooting CT's life story. You want to check the sound? CT, can you say a couple things? Uh, Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> I'm on a nursery rhyme thing. <laughs> okay. Everybody set? All right. Good. All right, CT, we're reunited again. Here we are. How you been, man? I've been blessed, can't complain about a thing. So I wanna get you know some things out of the way first. I mean, I heard that you had uh, health complications. Yeah, uh, I, that's putting it mildly. Mildly, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, how would you describe it? Uh, I had a almost life-ending heart attack in uh, June. June 15th, I think it was, uh, of this year. Uh, sitting on the couch in the living room and Almost didn't make it. I, I actually thought I was going to die. People think uh, when you have a heart attack, you have this massive pain in your chest, and it's just a, a sharp pain. And you know, and there are those type of heart attacks, but that is not what uh, the type that I had. It was just a tremendous pressure. It felt like uh, an elephant sitting on my chest, and I just couldn't breathe. I could not breathe. So. There's different types. There's a sharp pain, grab your chest and fall on the floor. And then there's that one that uh, just squeezes the life out of you. Just like something grabbing your heart and choking it. And that's, that's the, time I, the type I experienced. You've been through this before, obviously, years ago. It was a little different because I also didn't have uh, the sharp pain in your chest years ago in 2005. It was just that I had an aortic valve that was very weak and uh, it was at the point of uh, about to break. And, and if your aortic valve breaks, then you're dead. It's, you, it's no, they can't repair that. Oh, it broke. Let's go back in and fix it. There's no fixing an aortic valve. So they had to do, mine was in such bad shape that I had to have uh, emergency open heart surgery. And then this time? This time, uh, we made it to the hospital. I didn't think I was going to make it to the hospital, although my son Samson did. He assured me, you're not going to die, Daddy. And I was sure, and just as sure as he was that I wasn't going to die, I was just that sure I was going to die. I just, you know, I, I just could feel life fading from my body. I could just feel it, and I just knew that was it. So, but we, we got there, we made it to the hospital. They gave me some nitroglycerin and to get me, uh, you know, feeling a little bit better and I had to stay for the next two weeks uh, before they felt okay to let me come back home. They installed a pacemaker and defibrillator at that time. So now I got aortic valve, pacemaker, defibrillator, all installed. So what caused it? Um, what caused uh, that's it? A, a very good question. Uh, I am leaning toward uh, genetics. My diet obviously didn't help in being that size, you know, didn't, and what I ate didn't help. But what, I think that speeded it up, but genetically speaking, my mother and all nine of her siblings all died from heart-related uh, issues. My, my brother, who was just a year older than me, passed away last year from the same thing, you know, congestive heart failure that I have. Now, when we were working with you on the film. Yes. My Magnificent Obsession. Yeah. Um, I remember visiting your doctor. He talked about the operation, obviously, it was successful, and you were living with artificial valve for, for years. Yes. 
So do you think do you think the valve wore off over time? Or oh no, it? no, the valve is still working just fine. <laughs> the valve, uh, they check it. You know, I uh, I get sick of going to the doctor. They get mm -hmm. my uh, blood, the thinness of my blood checked, and checking on the valve. I had to do that since 2005. It sucks, but I have to do it on a regular basis, and the valve is just clicking away just fine. It's still clicking like it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you a question. You know, obviously, I think most people want to ask you, obviously. You still continue training hard, and now this happened. I mean, the first question I have is, do you think that could have caused it in a way? Uh, no, I don't think so, because I didn't actually start um, and, you know, because before I was, my career was a power lifter, and, you know, and, and in power lifting, your reps are very limited. You just don't, you know, I, I hardly, rarely went over six reps on any exercise that I did. You know, most of the time it was singles and doubles, twos and threes, and, but never uh, over six reps. So uh, I think me doing the longer reps and the crazy workouts and stuff didn't start until my second time around. So I completely changed from this power lifter where one rep max was the ultimate goal until a guy that tried to do crazy reps. So it's a big change and I, I don't think that uh, it affected my heart. At least I, you know, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't think so. So what is the current state of, of your health right now? And, and are you waiting for a heart transplant from what I understand, right? Yeah, uh, we, we went through, it's, it's a, a very long procedure. You just don't go down and tell them, hey, I need a new heart, can you give me a heart? It, you know, the big things that uh, concerned me and I had to try to wrap my head around was the fact that in order to get a heart, somebody else has to die. I wasn't really sure in the beginning if I could accept that, that uh, you know, I could accept that somebody else had to die in order for me to keep, keep living because I don't think that uh, I'm worthy of that or that I deserve that. And there's a lot, uh, a lot more people on the planet who deserve it a lot more than me. So I wasn't really sure I could accept it, but I had a lot of people talk to me. And uh, they, they explained. Yeah, you. they, they explained, well, those people are going to die anyway, CT. It's, you know, it's, 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 it, God wants you to keep living. And, you know, so after they got through talking to me, I, I went ahead and uh, changed my position on that. So right now you're in a state of just waiting basically right yeah basically waiting we go uh next month to actually talk to the physicians that will perform the actual surgery and that's that's the last step but the wait can be long no i mean it's, yeah yeah it can, the, it can the, the, be the, you don't know how long no you long. definitely don't know you know when and i don't know how many people are ahead of me uh you know i know there's everything has to match up you know, the heart that you get, they, the person has to have the same blood type. Mm -hmm. Everything has to match up right, in order right. for you to get it. So they don't just give it to, you know, random mm -hmm. people like that or whoever's on the list. Everything, if they, a heart comes in and matches the criteria for you, has the best shot of you living, then you get the heart. Mm -hmm. But it, so it's, you know, it's, it's a waiting game. But I ain't no big ass hurry either, so. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel to be right now in your situation, meaning that obviously you're waiting, but health-wise, are you able to, you know, still live a life and enjoy life? I mean, oh, I, I enjoy my life very much because, uh, you know, I, before it was all about, everything was about strength and being big and muscles and, you know, that was, but I found out that that is so, and I know the muscle, muscle heads are going to not like me for this, but it's so tiny, it's so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. You know, I found so much more better reasons for living than just trying to be the sidewalk cracking big motherfucking Superman from Compton, man. I have so much better reasons for living now than I did then. Are you still able to work out at all? Or right now you're basically, in, it's well, not a good idea. My super, <laughs> my goal was just to do to be able to do one push-up. And for, you know, a guy who's a, a six-time world champion to be relegated, to being actually happy if I could do one push-up on my own, it's a big transition, man. I thought that no matter how sick I was or whatever condition, my physical condition, I thought that I could just sheer on sheer will alone 
will myself to do one stinking push-up. There's just no way that I couldn't do one push-up. And the first time I tried it, Vlad, I failed. And it was, it, that was, yeah, I just started crying. That, that was hard. <laughs> I just couldn't believe I couldn't do one push-up. Now, what about obviously, because right now the, the crew is much bigger. Iron addicts is everywhere. Every, everybody's an iron addict right now. So when certain things happen, like somebody gets in trouble, like for instance, there was a scandal in Miami. Yeah. Right? Uh, iron addicts gym got raided right. by the cops. Obviously, yeah. in the headline, your name, CC yeah. Fletcher's gym got raided. I mean, things like that affect you when it happens? That affected the fuck out of me because uh, you know, I grew up, uh, if you shake somebody's hand, look them in the eyeballs and, and say you have a deal, then that's the deal. That's the, your word meant everything. So for that to happen, that, that I felt like that tainted my reputation or could mm -hmm. taint my reputation mm -hmm. or could taint, uh, you know, my word. And, mm -hmm. and I'm telling you, if this, thing, if this gym has my name on it, then it's got to be associated with me. It's got to be linked with me. Even though uh, the only affiliation I had was I, I, have, I had a friend that was involved with it. And I said, it says, hey, CT, can I use the name? Can I use Iron Addict's name on this gym? Sure, because it's a friend of mine. Sure, you can, you can use uh, the name. That's really the only association that I had with it is get, letting my name be used. But I, I learned a, a valuable lesson and I since uh, you know hired an attorney to actually get do all the franchise paperwork and everything. So now, if you see a gym with Iron Addict's name on it, it's going to be a, a legal franchise, and it's not going to be a, a friend deal where you can you, you can just ask me, and because you're my friend, I let you use my name. So now, it's no more of that. I learned I learned a good valuable lesson to not just you know let my name be put on anything. But you do plan to keep expanding the. Oh, the definitely. Change. Part of my vision to leave something uh, behind once I'm gone, and Iron Axe franchise gyms is one of the things I want to leave behind. But it's, it seems like now it's just already a movement. I don't think it's even CT. I think obviously you you were the CT Fletcher, but you know what I'm right. saying. At this point, it's just more of a movement thing. Yeah, the Iron Axe movement is is global now, man. I'm telling you, I got my best reception in Russia. I remember I mean, you told me you were yeah, going there. Yeah, it was it was crazy, and mm -hmm. they they had a. Over a hundred people come to the airport, mm -hmm. and they all had beers. And the men, mm -hmm. the women, everybody had beers on, fake beers mm -hmm. on, and, and it was just <laughs> unbelievable. It, That's it's, right. You know, and I don't speak one word of Russian, but they got a Russian guy over there who <laughs> translates my video, and he's every bit as enthusiastic as I am. <laughs> when he, when he, oh my God, man! I heard that guy. It was, it was, it's just really crazy. Uh, it, it's global now. Yeah. I want to ask you about the current state of powerlifting. Um, yes. I'll be honest with you. I know you're a powerlifter. Mm -hmm. I know I see powerlifting sometimes. You know, I see strongman, but specifically powerlifting. I mean, the sport, like, what is the state of it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not where I wish it would be because I think powerlifting uh, should be on the same level uh, as Olympic lifting. Uh, respectability, I think it should be in the Olympic Games. And it's, you know, if I do live, I would like to make that as one of my uh, priorities is to try to help powerlifting get into the Olympics because I think it, it, it should be an Olympic level uh, event. I think it should be in the Olympics. What do you think that didn't happen so far? I, I, because it's, it's uh, no unified body. We need mm. to, because there's so many different- Different competitions. Yes, there's so many different powerlifting organizations mm. If we could unify it, have one unified body uh, governing powerlifting and then present it as an Olympic sport, then I think we could do it. Do you feel like they will happen one day? Or do you feel like at least people will want to watch it more? If we could get powerlifting contests in front of the general public, it would be popular. But it, you know, it just doesn't make uh, the media as much because there's some real characters in powerlifting, I remember in my day, man, a powerlifting contest, a guy before, the psych up, just the psych up alone was worth the price of admission. This guy, before he'd lift, he'd bang a chair over his head, I'm talking about a steel chair, bang a steel chair wow. over his head until the blood was pouring down from his forehead, right. and then he'd go lift, then he'd be psyched up. If people could 
see that, see that yeah. then I think it, it's, it's, a, it's very entertaining to watch. Mm -hmm. and people want to be entertained. Powerlifting is entertaining. I want to ask you a couple of questions about your son, Samson. Um, I noticed he was doing uh, competitions now, right? Yes. Powerlifting. Yes. And I'm tremendously proud of him, Vlad, because just being the son, uh, being my son, he, he receives a tremendous amount of hate. hate. Just, oh, it's ridiculous the amount of hate that kids receive just because he's my son. If he was any other kid and he was just weightlifting, you know, it, it would be no problem. But because he's C.T. Fletcher's son, he gets a ton of hate. So he's under a micro, uh, microscope. So everybody's going to, uh, you know, have these super high expectations, right. unrealistic expectations of him. And he's just a kid. He's just trying to, you know, uh, do his thing. But what do they want to see from him? They want to see, uh, oh, wow, if your dad was this, they want to, then you have to try to be on the same level. Powerlifting. Yes, that his dad was. His dad's Mr. Olympia, then he should be Mr. Olympia right away. They don't <laughs> want to give him, you know, no breaks and no time to do it. He, mm -hmm. If your dad was Mr. Olympia, he, he was great. This is, then you have to be this too. It's the same, you know, with anything. Mm -hmm. If your dad's a great baseball player, football player, mm -hmm. whatever. If you choose, if that child chooses to go into the same field that their father was great in, then mm -hmm. the expectations on him is going to be super high. Can you imagine being Muhammad Ali's son mm -hmm. and then trying to be a boxer? Oh, oh yeah. my God, you, you wouldn't be able to make any mistakes. They right, right. So they wouldn't allow Samson to make any mistakes. He has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. so, um, why does he want to pilot? I mean, because ultimately he can just be your son and also build his own social media platform. Why? Exactly. He could have chose to do right. anything. Right. That's why I'm so you know, incredibly proud of him. I never asked him or, or you know, uh, prided him in any way to be a powerlifter. He chose it and because he loves it. He loves lifting weights. He's been, you know, been tagging around in the gym with me you know, ever since he was just a little bitty boy. And he'd always come and, and, and he'd be in the gym. He'd be in the gym even if he was too little to, to work out and lift weights, he'd mm -hmm. be in there. And ever since you know, he was real little, he always had that desire to be a weightlifter. So it's nothing that I... He's know, very strong. Yeah, he is. He's, 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 and, and it's competition. 100% drug free, 100% natural mm -hmm. competition, and I'm very proud of him mm -hmm. uh, for choosing that. You know, choosing that. It just I mean, it was much di more difficult for me to watch him, and, but also much more satisfying for me to watch his victory than, than any any of my victories. Yeah. Um, as any public figure, you know, you get a lot of comments. People also saying, you know, hateful things. Of course, this have this, and it's it's inevitable, right? Do you do you take time out of your day to even think about that? Well, definitely in the beginning, I was responding to everything. <laughs> I would read, read every comment because, you know, but I, it was a few, and I, and I would respond, I'd jump right on the man with both feet. I was like, you don't like me, motherfucker. I don't like you. Where your hate ends, my hate is just beginning. So your hate don't fa phase me because I, I guarantee you I can out hate you, motherfucker. So that, that's how it was in the beginning. But, a lot of things happened since then and has changed my outlook on so it just don't matter it don't e it just don't even matter I, my, my perspective now is no matter how much you hate me i'm gonna love you anyway mm -hmm. i decided i'm gonna love you anyway as you know when, when we filmed my magnificent obsession my father was not my favorite person in the world oh, yeah. but i'll tell you that since then i have gone to my father and asked my father to forgive me so you know that as from, you know, from Magnificent Obsession filming to now, that's a big huge. change. That's a huge change because, uh, you know, I, I really couldn't stand my dad. And I wondered a lot of times if my dad passed away, would I even care? Would he even bother me? Would I bother to go to the funeral? Would, you know, I, I really wondered that to myself. Would that even affect me at all? But I've had undergone a major change since then. So, uh, you know, I went to him and I asked my father to forgive me for holding this, you know, against him for all these years and blaming him for all this stuff for all these years. So and what, that, what did he say? He accepted my apology. <laughs> so it was, it, was big, it was big of him to, you know, accept my apology. And I, I, was, uh, I was fine because I was waiting on something that was never going to happen. I was waiting on him to apologize for my childhood never going to get it. And I was going to die an uh, angry, bitter man uh, 
if I didn't, you know, do something about it. So I chose to go to him and ask for his forgiveness. Do you think your father maybe um, understood what you went through, but just didn't want to tell you that or admit it to you? I really, I really don't think that my father feels like he has anything to be sorry for or, or to, uh, you know, uh, to be forgiven for. I really don't think he does. So I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think he does. But now at this point, it doesn't matter. Don't matter at all. Don't matter at all. Just like the hate. I, I had people uh, say, you know, send me comments that I, I thought she was already dead. I wish you'd hurry up and die, you know, and stuff like that. Wow. Hey, that, that don't faze me at all. You know what? I, I love you anyway. You know, even if you want me dead, I love you anyway. And I just might stay around just to piss your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> stay around a little while longer just to piss you motherfuckers off. Well, CC, thank you so much. I know you're going to make, make it through it and get your new heart, man. Everything's going to be great, man. All right, we're going to do thank another you. interview when I get my new heart. <laughs> right, right after. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, we can cut. Good job.